Okay, our captains uh, for this week on defense are James Rouse and Daryl Roberts, and on offense is Chris Jaspers and Tommy Schuler. Um, you know, we've got great respect. Uh, I do for what Bobby Wilder has done at that at Old Dominion. Uh, it's amazing what he's accomplished in a short period of time, and uh, you know, he's got a quarterback that may be the best player that uh, or he will be at the end of the season if he continues to go. But will lead the country, will be the be the most prolific passer in the history of college football. So. That's where it all starts. Uh, he's got two NFL receivers. He's throwing to number six, Pascal, number five, Vaughn. Uh, they score a lot of points on everybody. And uh, you know we're going to go up there into a hostile environment. Had the opportunity to watch, as you all did, I'm sure, Friday night. And uh, it, it's a packed house that make a lot of noise. So it'll be a great environment and an environment our kids are going to have to be prepared for. So we know it's going to be a great challenge. And uh, we've got to have a great week of preparation you know, prior to getting on that plane on Friday. So. Yeah, and you got to, you know, the thing you, I'm not concerned about them going into that environment and being intimidated by it, but, you know, the snap counts and, the, you know, being able to communicate and all that thing as an offense is something that we haven't had to do for a while. So, you know, we'll work on that this week in practice and, uh, and uh, get a little crowd noise out there so we're prepared for it. But, uh, you know, like I said, our kids enjoy playing, would rather play in that type of environment than go play somewhere where nobody shows up. So it should be a great environment, and I know our kids are looking forward to it. Have you ever coached in a game where the quarterbacks on both sides are even close to that prolific? Mm, I, I don't remember, to be honest. Maybe at Florida, you know, we, had, we went and played some really good – but, you know, these two they, these two guys are – you know, you watch them on film, they're very similar. You know, the one thing I think that Heineke does is he's like Cato when he gets in trouble. You know, number one, he can beat you with his feet. and uh, But his eyes are constantly down the field. And uh, he makes a lot of throws, you know, in scramble situations. Uh, does a great job stepping up in the pocket, and uh, you know he makes all the throws. And you know you never feel comfortable as a coach when you're playing that team because you know even you, you take away a couple of those turnovers early on in that game, they don't get that punt return for a touchdown. You know, and uh, you know that game is is right down to the wire. And uh, you know the one thing at that, that the philosophy of that football team when you watch them play, they're always looking for extra possessions. And so that's why they got that quarterback in a punt formation on fourth down. At times they'll go for it. They've onside kicked three times. I'm sure they got a fake punt. You know, they got something else up their sleeves. So you know, they're constantly looking to put the ball in that guy's hands. And that, now that punt that uh, with the quarterback backfired on him a little bit against uh, you know middle because when you do punt it, you got a single safety back. If you're covering with five offensive linemen. It's almost what happened to Alabama in that Auburn game when they kicked that field goal down there and they're covering with offensive linemen instead of skill guys. So. You know they got to be a little careful with that because if you can catch that punt and get a couple blocks on those receivers, you got an opportunity to return a punt as Middle did. So, you know they're again they're always looking for more possessions. We got to be extremely sharp in all our kicking game and all that to make sure that uh, they don't get an extra possession by some kind of trick play or onside kick or that type of thing. Friday night uh, they fall behind twenty-four or nothing, and you know you look at twenty-four or nothing. It didn't seem like a deficit that they were really worried about. They got back to it. And I think they had a chance to cut the one possession at the beginning of the fourth quarter. They they worked their way back in that third quarter. They did. It was a ten. It was a ten point game there several times. And you know the way they you know they just I mean they throw. I mean it doesn't matter. You, know, you look at down and distance. You look at all the things they do. I mean they're going to throw that ball vertical down the field regardless. It could be third and one and they're going to take a shot. It can be second and long and they're not going to try to make it third and five. They're going to take another shot. So they constantly press the ball down the field to those receivers, and, and they got really good receivers. I mean, you look at them on tape, and I'd mentioned, uh, you know, Pascal and Vaughn, but those other guys, that backup quarterback, number 10, is also a receiver. They're all big physical guys that can play. So, you know, they do a great job of throwing and catching, and again, they stretch that field vertical, but they can also throw the intermediate routes and that running backs. I think he's, he's got like 30 catches, and, uh, and he, can, he can also play. So they're talented a bunch skill, with their skilled players. Aggressive offense going on aggressive defense, and y'all got 21 pass breakups. The coverage has been really solid this year. Four interceptions, and it, I mean it's it's pretty much an aggressive style of game. In this well, matchup. you know, there's no doubt that uh, you know it's going to test our defensive backs. It's going to test the second level backers, and it's going to test the front four because at some point you got to try to get some pressure on this guy. And uh, you know, if you look at where he's aligned, you know he's, he lines up deep to begin with, so he's taking some seven step drops at times and. 
you know, those guys can get edge pressure a little bit, but he does a good job of stepping up because he's so deep. You know, it's hard to get that press up the middle to get hands in his face. So it's a difficult task, but, uh, you know, our, our, you know, we're going to somehow get some pressure. Uh, you know, our, our, our DBs are going to have to play better than they played all year. And uh, again, it's going to be a great challenge for our defense and uh, to see how they respond and how they play. Well, that's what you know. You want to try to start fast, you know, as we always do, whether it be on the road. You know, and, and what I like about this year's team it hadn't made any difference where we play. You know, we've, we've been able to start fast regardless, and uh, that's going to be critical again. Uh, you know, critical again on on uh, on Saturday. I thought you know the one you look at. Cause I, you know, we all had I had opportunity to watch that game, and you know that first series, ODU took that ball right down the field. Memphis kid did a great job of stripping that ball instead of. You know, being seven nothing ODU to begin with, they got a turnover there that was a big play in that game. So, you know, it's 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 nice when you can start out fast. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to try to do that. And uh, like I said, it'll be a great challenge playing up there and getting that done. It seemed there were turnovers on both sides, and seemed both defenses were very active in trying to strip and rip. I mean, how much are you guys really impressing upon your guys this week that that's going to happen when they get the game tackle? On both well, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, you watch. You watch that game, and, and Old Dominion did it. They do a great job of really f you know, stripping the football, and you could actually see it. And there's no doubt, no question, they coach the heck out of it. Uh, you know, we constantly coach ball security, whether it be this week or last week or six weeks ago. But we're gonna, you know, we got to put a great you know, even, and, and we emphasize it every week. But they'll be emphasized a lot this week with our scout team guys doing a great job trying to get that ball stripped. Because there's no doubt that uh, if you don't take care of the football, then they're going they're going to find a way to come up with it. Seems like their linebackers biggest, but they're good at, at holding guys up to other people becoming a strip. Well, there's, you know, they, they, it's obvious when you see it on tape, they coach it. So, you know, we got to do a good job making sure we coach our side of it, too, and take care of the ball. And looking back at the bye week, was there any place that you kind of looked back or looked on film and said, man, if we really got better on this bye week right here? Well, you know, we didn't, you know, we we treated that bye week like we always do. I mean, we treated it no different. We did a week or a year ago. and. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing about that bye week, we had a couple guys with some nagging injuries that we were able to, you know, when we started out Sunday, they were back, you know, Rock uh, has taken a beat in the last several games and he was banged up a little bit, but he's 100% now. And a couple of those offensive linemen now are, feel better than they felt, you know, Rouse and all those guys since the season started. So that's number one. I think that's huge. And, and when you play a team like this that throws the ball around like they do, it's always nice to get an extra week of preparation. You know, our week uh, last year, we had that week prior to UTSA, who was extremely good on offense at this point, and we played really well against them. So hopefully that off week translates this year like it did a year ago playing UTSA. And you know what? These teams are very similar. You look at where they've come from, and, you know, with Coker, with Larry's team out there, the way they've – how fast they've become a really good football team and competed at the highest level, you know, this team's doing the same thing. So it's going to be, a, again, a great challenge for us. You just got to play. I mean, you got to you got to be able to cover. You got to be able to pressure. You got to be able to. You just can't let him stand back there and just you know pick you apart because he can do that. I mean, again, you watch him play and uh, he's he can make all the throws and uh, there's a reason he he could end up being the most uh, prolific passer in college football history is because he's damn good. He's really good at what he does and uh, and again he's got good players around him so yeah, he's gonna make some throws. You know he made throws. He made throws against everybody. I mean. They took NC State. If you watch that tape, you know right to the wire at NC State, you saw what happened that game with Florida State uh, this past week. NC State was toe to toe with Florida State, so you know they played some really good teams and uh, went to, went to Rice and who won our championship a year ago and, and beat them. And uh, so you know we, again we've got great respect for him and, and those receivers and that entire offense, and, and we've got to make sure that we do a good job of, of defending that and, and playing extremely sound and playing with great fundamentals and technique and, and get after him. Uh, what's your evaluation of the pass rush in the first four games? Uh, well, I think you know we've done a good job of number one mixing things up, but I think there hasn't you know there's with the number I think we're in the middle of the pack as far as sacks are concerned in our league, but we've put we've got a lot of pressures. You, know, you watch Rouse and you see that there's been some interceptions because of pressures. I think we've getting I think we're getting good edge pressure. And I think we're getting good pressure with our push up front with the Rouses and those guys. So. 
I think it's been adequate, and we've you know we've been able to do, we've we've done some uh, things where we brought five and six man blitzes, which I think we've also created some pressure. And most of those interceptions were off of pressure throws. So, you know what happens a lot of times, Doug, is you get into what we're doing and what Akron and some of the other people were doing. You know, people are getting the ball so quick out of their hand at times you don't get sacks, but the pressures you know can create bad throws and that type of thing, which I think we've had a lot of those things. Well, you know, what, what we try to do is eliminate the easy access throws, you know, by the way we play coverage. And if we can do that, then if you can get that quarterback to hold on to the ball just a hair longer, you can come up with more sacks. So obviously that's what we'd like to get done. And now when you do that, you're going to take some shots down the field on you. you got to be able to, you know, cover the field vertically. So at times you got to pick your poison. I don't think you can do anything all the time. I think you got to be pretty good at, at mixing up coverages, mixing up pressures, and you know, so they can't get a beat on you. But you can't, again, you got to be able to do you know, several different things in order to contain this offense. And I think that's something that's not developed. I mean, that's something that's developed in your winter conditioning. That's something that's developed in the weight room. Uh, it's something developed by the type of kids you recruit. You recruit guys that love football and that love to play, that play extremely hard, and it's the way you practice. I mean, you know, it's the way you go out every day and go to work and practice. And But, you know, I mean, I, I don't get too bent out. I mean, but that's, you know, you just, that's the way you're supposed to play. And uh, we work extremely hard to get that done. So, uh, they're, they're giving up almost as many points and yards as their game, though. Do you think they will look to get in a shootout with you? Is that one thing they can hope to do? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, Woody, they, again, they've, you know, there's no doubt they, they, they score a lot of points. And, uh, you know, I think it's, you just got to, you know, you never know how games are going to go. But, uh, you know, I, the worst feeling I ever had as a coach. Was when I felt like I had to outscore people, and I felt like a couple of years ago when that happened. I mean, that's the worst. I, I just I don't like anything about that. So, you know, we sure don't want to get in that type of game. I'm sure he doesn't either because that's not a good feeling and not something that uh, that I like. And I'm sure Bobby doesn't like that either. So we'll see. He's also struggled again. I mean, FBS schools are only three and six so far. I know they haven't had a, a lot of time in that punch bowl, but uh, you know, it seems like it shows up more. Maybe Michigan besides. Yeah, you know, and I've seen them play, uh, you know, like I say, I think Middle's a good football team. And I saw them play them to the wire. And, you know, Rice going on the road and beating Rice. And, you know, Rice comes back and, and beats, you know, Southern Miss this past week. So, you know, Rice is, we all know what type of players Rice has. And, and that, you know, a lot of that, you watch them play NC State. And uh, you go back clear to East Carolina a year ago. You know, we all felt East Carolina a year ago was a good football team. And they're showing it this year. And they played East Carolina extremely well a year ago. So, you know, they're very, very capable, you know, and uh, and like I say, it is, it is kind of amazing that they're as far along as they are being as, you know, just with the program just starting. But they, they sure, I guarantee you, if you don't go up there prepared and play your tail off, you're going to get beat. And I said all the time, you know, when I, when I sit in here on, somebody's going to pick up the paper on Sunday and, you know, who would have thought Akron was going to go beat Pitt? I mean, who would have thought Boston College loses to Colorado State after beating Southern Cal. So, you know, every week somebody gets beat that shouldn't. And if you don't go up there, you know, well prepared and and focused and and ready to go do your job, you're gonna walk out of there with a loss. And we, our kids, understand that, and as coaches, we understand that because I promise you, this football team's plenty good enough to beat you if you don't go prepared and don't go play your tail off. Did you see any film of Old Dominion last year? Particularly, they gave up 80 to, to North Carolina. And compare it with this year. Has the defense really been improved? Or you know, Doug, we went back and watched. Uh, we we have gone back because we do some things in the summertime. You know, we didn't have with with new teams and that type of thing. And I know we spent a lot of time on East Carolina. You know, we spent a lot of time on. We've watched a lot of tape. There's no doubt their defense is, is a lot better than they were a year ago. And uh, you know, and I say offensively, they're they're a year older with that quarterback, and, and they can score a lot of points. Uh, the Eastern. Uh, Eastern Michigan game, I think that was a downpour up there, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, there, there was not a lot of points scored in that game, probably the less, but I, went, I couldn't figure out why. And I guess there was a downpour that particular day, and neither neither team was able to move the ball a whole lot. So. Uh, has your run game even surprised you a little bit this year? How close you guys have been? Running? Well, I think it, I'm not, yeah, I, I can't sit here and tell you I thought we'd run the ball as well as we have, and I can't tell you that I thought that, that Rock would be as effective as he is, but I felt like he was a really good player. 
you know, I felt like our offensive line had made drastic improvements from a year ago. I think they've gotten better every year we've been here. Uh, I think also that, you know, that from the depth standpoint, uh, you know, with Swede getting hurt and being able to play Mendelssohn and Addison and all those guys, I think down the road that's going to help us. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I think whenever you can run the football like we're able to run it, and hopefully we can continue to do that, then it sure helps you in all the other areas. When you look at what Jordan Parker did last week, I mean, he goes 31 carries, a, I think a buck 50, and really whenever ODU needed to stop the run, they couldn't against middle. Is, is that one of those deals where you, you now have a back that size to sort of be able to compare and say, okay, well, this is what a big back did for middle. This, mm -hmm. you know, this could be something that we could look at. Well, you always, as you're studying tape, you try to find you know, ways that what you think you can do. And there's no doubt Jordan Parker's a big man and he ran, they, they ran the ball well and had, had unfortunately had a couple of turnovers there that hurt him, you know, in the red zone score zone that, uh, but, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, we, we're going to go in and just, you know, do what we do, uh, you know, take what the defense gives us and hopefully we're able to run the football and we can throw around and catch it a little bit. And, and uh, if we can do that, then we got a shot, but uh, we're going to have to go in there extremely well prepared and, uh, you know, it's, anytime you go on a road like this, leadership is a key. You know, those four captains I mentioned and the rest of the leadership on this team has got to go in there and, and lead us. And uh, the other thing we talk about all the time is when you go on the road, you got to be an extremely tough football team. And that's probably, I mentioned earlier, I like that more about our team right now than anything else is I think we're playing extremely physical and I think mentally we're a tough team. So if we can do those two things, we'll have a chance. If we don't, we've got no chance. I was looking, you know, you're talking about offense. I mean, so many people like, oh, they're a passing team. Oh, oh they're a running team. I mean, your rushing offense and your passing offense are almost a one-to-one -one in terms of yardage. I mean, just when, when you're that even, how how much does that drive a defense, a opposing defense? That's when you're like, okay, I think we, we can't figure out what their preference is or, or, what it, or, or anything because it's almost even. Well, uh, I think what people can do is look at our tape and – and say, well, hey, they're doing this because we're doing this. For example, if they got, if they're lighting the box, they can see us handing it off, and then they can see when people put an extra hat in the box. Guess what? We're throwing it outside and we're making plays. And so I think people have to pick their poison a little bit, you know. But I think if if you look at our offense, they're going to say, yeah, they're relatively balanced, but they're they're doing it because we're taking what the defense gives us, and that's what we're trying to do offensively. And you know, we're not we haven't planned in any way, shape, or form to work out like it has, but it has, you know, but because of our, again, Coach Leg and that offensive staff and Cato and, and our guys are not trying to put square pegs in round holes and we're able to get the looks that we're getting, our guys are able to make plays, you know, and that's critical. Because Jasper keeps saying, like, with Akron, I think they passed this last week, you know, he's like 36, 38, 30 and 10, all converted the first down all by, all by run. So what were they? What were you kind of seeing, or do you remember what you were kind of seeing on those plays to say, okay, we know on third and ten, well, we can just hand it off. And Akron, Akron, when those in those situations, they were three, they were three down, they were lighting the box, mm -hmm. and uh, so we were able to, when they do that, I mean, we're able to get hats on them and and go run for eight and uh, and get that first down. So again, that's just taking, you know, taking what the defense gives us, and and our guys have done a great job of doing that. And I think there's two areas that. That, that we've got to continue to do well in. You know, the one reason we're playing really good defense is that we're getting off the field on third down. You know, we're getting off the field. I think Akron, Akron I don't know the exact numbers, but they were two for whatever, 16 or whatever, on third down conversions. Whereas we're converting our third downs at a pretty high ratio. If we can continue that, then we continue to stop them and defense can get off the field. That's going to be critical. That's going to be really critical on, on Saturday is we got to be able to get off the field with this guy on third down. And in many situations, we've got to be able to get off the field on fourth down because they've gone for it like 14 times and got like 10 or 11 of those. So, you know, when you get into a third down situation and think you got them stopped and they're going to punt the ball, where all of a sudden they're lining up with their offense and they're coming at you again. It may be at the minus 30, it may be minus 20. They're going to take some chances again to gain that extra possession. It's going to be critical that we be able to get off the field on, on third and fourth down, you know, with these guys. What have you all seen from the rushing game? I know that, you know, they got behind the other night, so they weren't able to, they really turned one dimensional because of that 24 nothing deficit. But uh, but have you seen in some other games that they have the ability to run the ball or is it more in high empty stands? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, they've, you know, they ran it well against NC State at times. Number 30, Johnson is a really a physical guy. 
you let, he's got like 30 receptions. They get, to, you know, they don't run it, but they get the ball to him a lot out of the backfield, especially on checkdowns because there's a lot of four vertical stuff with checkdowns to the back. They also flurry him out of the backfield and do that kind of thing. But they have the ability. They're, you know, they're they're very similar to to Akron and us and a lot of people. A lot, you know, a lot of people are doing the same things. If you're gonna like, if you're gonna give them, you know, for example, NC State was lining up in a four-one box, which has five. That's in there, and they're gonna run it, and they ran it pretty well, you know. And uh, so, if you give them that four-one box, then chances are they're gonna hand it off like we do, and Akron does, and a lot of people that are doing these things. And and uh, but again, they also like like we do it, uh, have been able to do is they got the ability to make plays on the outside with those receivers. So uh, again, it's gonna be a challenge. And you know, the third phase of it that we gotta we gotta do, we gotta be good. I mean, you gotta win the special team battle. You know, you got offense, you got defense, you got special teams, and. And all three of those are really critical in, in this game. Barnes not only, I mean, he's a great receiver, but he's also really dangerous in the return. Game. He had two returns against Eastern uh, Michigan for touchdowns on punt returns. So he also touches as a punt returner. And, uh, you know, like he, he's leading our league. It's either him or the guy at FIU are leading our league in punt returns. So there's no doubt that you got to know where he is as a wide out. But when you punt the ball, you better cover punts too because he can go. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't unless people just think they can't run the ball on us, and most of those tackles are off of, of throws. You know what I mean? And uh, we've done a pretty good job of stopping the run. People have had to throw the ball, so I, you know, there's no doubt that uh, you know those guys. Number one, they're good players, and um, you know I like him. And the thing is, you know, Baxter's. Not, I mean, he's he's been out there a while. He's played some. He's healthy now. So if we can keep him healthy, we can rotate him in there a little bit. That's going to help us. But uh, Corey Tindall and. And Daryl are playing extremely well, and it's going to be a great. You know, it's going to be extremely. Uh, they got to play really well on Saturday because these guys are good. And you got Allen out there late in the Packer game too. Guys. I think he's going to be a player. Yeah. Well, I don't think I know he is. It's just a matter. He's, you know, he's got to learn. And uh, and Roe, I mean, the Roe guy went in there and played almost 100 plays. I, I got that. Found out out the next Monday or whatever. I couldn't believe it. But uh, didn't know if he'd play 100 plays the whole year. He ended up playing about 100 against Akron with special teams. So he's a. He's a good old town of guy that that so we got some guys that we hopefully we can get in the game there. And you mentioned Swag, you know, leading the team in tackles. He's also really good. A, a lot of times with this this spread look that teams are going to, they try and run off the edge and run at corners, and he's a really good run defender in that, well, in that sense. You know, Chuck does a good job. But if we, you know, we, you know, we talk about all the time about single digit missed tackles, and if we can be in single digit missed tackles, Saturday we'll win. You know, because there are all this to have, things are happening in space and. You know, Swag uh, does it, and, and Chuck Heater does a tremendous job. All our coaches on, on teaching fundamentals of tackling, and we tackle live every week. We'll tackle live again today, you know, and uh, we do it every game. And uh, but you know, they just they got to continue to tackle well. And there's no doubt that there's a lot of with what these guys do offensively. There's a lot of plays that have to be made in space, and normally it's those second and third level players that have to do that. I watched that quarterback against uh, against Middle and NC State create major problems from scramble situations because guys could not get him tracked down in space. You know, once he stepped up and that thing opened up and he's running, you know, you got to get him on the ground. And when he gets on, if he slides, you got to leave him alone. I guess he had a couple calls against middle that because of uh, when he was sliding. But we got to do a great job of getting him on the ground and all their players. Does everybody you pitched has banged up the last couple of weeks? Do you expect him to be available? I think so. We'll know more, you know, towards the end of the week. But uh, I think for the most part we are, yeah. Especially with Devontae Allen and Angelo on the outside, especially just because of their size, their athleticism, what, what, what problems do you think they present most well, for this secondary? I mean, it's got to be a win. You know, and, um, you know, when you can win outside, you got a shot. And Angelo, Devontae, Craig, you know, Hunt, you know, you know, all those guys have got to some point, uh, you know, if you got you to be able to win outside. That was our nemesis a year ago. And, uh, you know, hopefully we got that fixed. I think we have. Schuler was uh, named Schuler, one of your captains. Uh, how well has he taken not getting as many touches as he has in the last oh, he's, year so far? He sure hadn't said anything to me about it. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I mean, I'd be, you know, all the receivers want the ball. I mean, surely, but you know, he's, uh, he's, 
you, these kids, he's like, I mean, Cato could care less about how many times he throws it. And I think he'd rather run for a touchdown now than throw for one. But, uh, you know, but he, these guys, they've been great because they don't care. You know, and if you got a really good team and, you know, they're concerned about they're not selfish and, you know, and all those things, then, then you got a shot. And uh, I think these kids are just concerned about winning. And if that could continue, we got a chance. Thanks. Uh.